I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files here in the heart of Salt Lake City. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time with us today. In the last few weeks, we met Adam Swap, and for the next couple of weeks, we're going to meet his dear wife, Charlotte Swap, Charlotte Singer Swap. And I appreciate you coming so much, Charlotte. Well, thank you for inviting story. me. And you're going to share some things that we didn't quite get time even with uh, with Adam and some interesting things. Okay. So, But as we do, uh, you, you were born here in Salt Lake, were you? I was actually born in Marion, Utah. Okay. And um, my, both of my parents were uh, LDS. Yeah. And um, they were... Uh, very active and um brothers and sisters did you have brothers i seven seven siblings and i'm in, i'm in, in the middle a middle child yeah huh? I'm one of the, yes and um they were actually uh excommunicated when i was very young so i don't remember going to church i was like four years old but before that, uh, they participated and they did everything, whatever you do. And yeah. But they were excommunicated because? They were excommunicated because the more and more that they would study the uh, LDS doctrine, they could see that it didn't go along with the modern day prophets. And one of the big... Um, changes was the uh, polygamy, plural marriage, because if if it's in the scriptures, why aren't they living it? And yeah. so that was a big deal. So you had the church before 1890, so to speak, mm -hmm. and the church after. And isn't that interesting that Adam and his family, perhaps, were having those same, yes, <laughs> in yes. a different part of the state, uh, were having those same... Well, you've got the DNC 131 and uh, Section 132, and it's just right there. Yeah. And then uh, they're saying you shouldn't live it anymore, and so that's total, complete contradictory, and it's confusion. Yeah. And if you truly believe that this is what God revealed, then... By golly, you better be living it. Yeah. And so, um, <laughs> dad and mom couldn't uphold the uh, prophet at the time was Joseph Fielding Smith. And if you don't uphold the, you yeah, you get excommunicated. And he did take a second wife, you'd thought. He did um, the year before he was killed. Oh, okay. yeah. So I wasn't like raised first-hand plural marriage, but I believed in it all my life. Yeah. Now, did you live the principles of what we'd call the Mormon gospel? I mean, you, word of wisdom and... Yes, that and, was very uh, important, you know, drinking Book of Mormon, coffee. Joseph Smith, or all Oh, yes, this. definitely. Dad yeah. would teach us at home, and, and when um, I turned, well, I was nine, actually, he uh, uh, made a little font, and baptized me with another family, mm -hmm. and 
I didn't know why I was being baptized. I was very, very shy. And so he didn't ask me any questions because he knew I would just start to cry. So it was, did it was he stressful. Sen did you sense that you were having your sins washed away or that you um, were that's what I was to told, Jesus or something? But it, you know what? It was so vague that it really, yeah. it, didn't, it didn't really mean that much to me. Well, it's interesting that we do baptize, or the Mormons baptize eight-year-olds. When you uh, don't know anything. You don't, yeah. And what sins have you committed? <laughs> well, My wife always wanted to be baptized as an adult later so she could have all those sins washed away. And, but you don't know, what do we understand? But you were nine then. You were, you mm -hmm. were, did you sense the conflicts that your father had had? And you know, he was also taking, he, he was also... Uh, you have taken the children, your children, out of school. Well, actually, that my first, uh, th my oldest three siblings, they were attending public school, and Dad d didn't like how restricted they were, and it was kind of like that they weren't his children. They were pretty much in the state's care because they would dictate ha what they were going to be taught, mm -hmm. and you know, it's their, it's their. Uh, schools so of course they have their rules and regulations so as time went on they would bring uh, my sisters and brother would bring their schoolwork home and he didn't agree with it and so um, he took he took him out would that be as big a deal today weren't there a lot of homeschooled children no it wouldn't well actually my father did um, he did incorporate in his own private school legally. So he was trying to do everything, you know, according to, you know, to make it all legal, but they, dad was not liked in the community. He was um, full German. He was very uh, open about his uh, beliefs and his feelings and he, uh, outspoken like when they would go to church to if the they Mormon to the Mormon church. church when they were still active, in, uh, yeah. active he would raise his hand and say uh, excuse me that because they'd be teaching from the manuals the church manuals and he would correct him and say well it says this and this in the um, doct in the LDS doctrine and so they didn't like that because he wasn't one to just follow along. Like um, the rest of us, or like I did, just not well, really he, question what the brethren are saying or anything, and any of the old stuff, I just kind of figured, well, we've moved on from that or something, I don't know. Well, he was, he was quite adamant in wanting to know the truth, wanting to do what's right because of his experience, what happened in Germany um, and how... Because um, his grandfather was... His the, father was... His a, father. Yeah. Your grandfather. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a Nazi and his mom, she was, uh, she was converted when she was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And so there was always this conflict, but with how my father saw what happened to the German to their country yeah. because of this dictator and people you know just went along with it he believed if something's right no matter what you should stand on it sure. instead of just going along with it yeah interesting so people in the community <laughs> had probably in the well, church certainly had a hard time with that he Like I said, he was, you know, he wasn't popular, but the more and more he studied, it just didn't go along <laughs> with what they teach now. Yeah. It's just evolving right. as it goes. Yeah. Um, and um, he uh, just felt that it was God, it, he felt that it was his God giving freedom and rights to teach his children at home. And, and like you say, he tried to do everything in a proper way. He did, he did. Yeah. But so what finally 
precipitates the con the confrontation well, with, with the law? Um, we had standardized tests from the school board. We had, um, we tried to work it out, but then we had to go to court. When he, after going to court, I think it was the sixth time the judge and the prosecuting attorney, they were talking like over his head, like where would they, that where would, um, the state place us in uh, uh, foster care. Wow. And so he would try to tell his side or try to talk and they just wanted him to be quiet. And that was it. After that, he never went back. And then he was found in contempt of court. And then we were under siege for 13 months. He never left the property. It was all over contempt of court? And then it escalated because the officer would, he was actually kind of friends with the officer and he said well you know what would you do if you know I tried to arrest you now and he said I wouldn't uh, let you take me and he just thought it was his constitutional freedom to teach his children at home yeah. and um, there was more dynamics to the story because you've got the judges, you've got the uh, principal of the church, uh, principal of the school, they all have high standings in the church. So. And here dad's, you know, he's, you he's excommunicated yeah. and he, we're going to hell type of thing. And so I think they were trying to make an example. Just the small community mm -hmm. situation yeah. again. So you actually, or so tell us what happens kind of at, uh, in 79. In, in, um, like I said, we were under siege for uh, for 13 months. Could he where leave he, the he did not leave the he did not leave because yeah. he knew that if he did, he would be arrested. Okay. Um, so in January of uh, 79, we would have friends bring us uh, groceries. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> we knew that we were being s s surveilled, that we were, that, you know. People there watching. They were watching yeah. because they, of course, they were trying to, you know, arrest my father. Sure. And we had, the year before, in the summertime, I don't know exactly when it was, they, there was officers that opposed us, reporters that came and tried to, uh, oh yeah, and they did. They had the van, and they tried to shove him in the van, oh, and goodness. and so that was really scary. But um, so we knew we were being, we knew that they, they were surveilling us, and yeah. that they were watching to try to arrest Dad. And so um, on uh, January of eighteen, on the eighteenth of uh, 79, I, I um, would, uh, my job was to milk the goats. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so um, I was getting up that morning and putting on my coat and I remember uh, smiling at dad because dad, dad was a person where he was so, he was just an upbeat, happy. Really? When things were going wrong, because he was a TV repairman, yeah. and when things were going wrong and he couldn't figure out what, how to fix this TV, he'd just start whistling. Later on, I heard, I learned that he, you know, had a temper, but I, I never saw that. But uh, he was always uh, the smile on his face, yeah. just the joy. He just loved us kids so. Great dad. So much. Oh yes, yeah. he was everything. He was, he was my world at the time. Yeah. And um, that morning, I remember looking at him, and he just looked right through me. It was just because he the pressure, because oh. he told mom that. I believe that they want blood. So and Thirteen so, months of. And so stress. he was just under a lot of stress, and I just remember smiling at him, and he wasn't there. He, mm. 
and then uh, he was. We had a big, huge snow storm uh, that night, and so he was clearing out the lane so we could have the, all these people to come to deliver the groceries, yeah. and um, we had a pair of binoculars that we would watch the officers because there there'd be officers on snowmobiles that would you know go in front of the house well yes yeah, up up in the field and, yeah. and, and so we would always watch you know and so and I I that was just something I would do and so when he was clearing the road I noticed that he stopped the snowblower and walked the rest of the way down the lane and to get the mail because he's I saw that the mail came and um, I remember looking at Dad, just watching him, and he looked to his left, and he, he, he could see there's two s snowmobiles, and he went and got the mail and started coming back home, and um, there was two other snowmobiles on the right, so they both came up the lane, and they were like chasing him. Mm -hmm. That's what I perceived. And so I yelled to mom, they're getting dad. Mm. They're, they're getting dad. And she came to the uh, window and um, she said that she saw him with his pistol out because he always carried, a always carried a pistol. Yeah. And it was known on the news. And, she, and it was like, I mean, because there was all these officers and it was like, leave me alone. Yeah. And so she's frantic trying to find her boots. So I go back to the window and pick up the binoculars. And um, I saw him, uh, his hands were like, if he, he loved to run. We would, he would run with us, but his hand, he was in a running motion. And then he went like this. And then blood came out of his mouth and he just face down and it was just, Mm -hmm. slow motion and the snow came up and it was just surreal it, it, it I don't know I was uh, well, sorry to make you relive that at, at all I, I guess that, I'm sure that's a it uh, at that point um, dad wasn't dead there was no way I, I didn't put those yeah. two together right. with my mind but after that, they came up and they uh, um, took us to Salt Lake, and we were put in a, the detention center, and Mom was put in jail. And, and then hours and hours later, they said that uh, your father was shot in the uh, knees, and the poison rushed to his heart, and he's dead. And of course, we didn't believe that. So, but. Um, now your mom was, were you all released then shortly after and able to go home? Two weeks later, um, we, we were able to go back to our farm and that's when it uh, really, <laughs> really, really set in because yeah. dad was such a yeah. big part of uh, it just, he was everything and then that, mm -hmm. him being gone. Yeah. That was difficult. Yeah. And uh, and just, I want to bring the church into this, I guess, but was your mother active, or not active, but was she, she was a good, followed the rules and, and did that, continued teaching you? Yes, oh yes. We, you know, we would read the scriptures, we would sing our hymns. Um, but after dad died, it was, Oh, yeah. It was just so empty. There was just such yeah. a big, empty hole. And not too long after that, it was actually a year later, then they tried to take our property away because we didn't have a legal deed. Oh, Adam was explaining And then we that. went through, went we went through uh, a hearing, and luckily there were people still alive that knew Dad and his uncle that could testify that, yes, um, they did have mm -hmm. a verbal agreement that this was his property. Right. And so we did win that, and that was, <laughs> that was a blessing. Yeah. But then Adam 
around that time Adam was came to, came to them, yeah. Okay, what did you think of him when you first saw him? <laughs> <laughs> you were how old now? I Nine or was. Ten or so? I was 12 years old. 12? Okay. Yeah. And um, I absolutely thought he was wonderful. Really? <laughs> yes. He, he had the, his personality, the charisma, the positive. Yeah. It was a lot, I don't know, it was a comfort. Yeah. There was some similarities between him and my father. Yeah. And um, it really helped. He was a great help. Um, he did a lot of things on the property, and he tried to help in this and that and fix things up. Kind of help fill that gap of And he did. Yeah. he did. He yeah. did. Um, and when he married my sister, even though I was so young, this sounds crazy, but I really, when he married my sister, I just cried and cried because it was just like, uh -oh. <laughs> I I liked him the first time I ever saw him. Wow. Yeah. And um, of course he didn't like me. He said I would have been insane if you know I would totally <laughs> just a little girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but you do end up marrying. I do end up marrying him, and then we have we had one uh, child together, a boy. Yeah. And I I. We named him after my father oh. and his father, oh. and he, uh, wow, children. <laughs> so what was going on? I mean, you, were, you weren't active in the church then at this point, certainly in the Mormon well, church. You know what? Just... I personally, I was never active in the uh, modern-day church. Well, I, just, and... I just read, we just read the teachings. Yeah of Joseph Smith, um, Brigham Young, and John Taylor. And then after that, I pretty much believed that they fell away from the truth because they weren't living Well, I think marriage. that's what's so interesting, and you almost wonder why more current Mormons don't go back and think that same process. I, I, I didn't personally, but you just think, well, there are two different churches here. We, we have all this Adam-God theory that we talked about before, and. Uh, the blacks and priesthood and, and then polygamy and all this old stuff that we just don't follow anymore. I think a lot of it has to do with the way you're raised. Yeah. You know, I was raised that uh, the, the Mormon church, the modern day Mormon church was corrupt because they weren't following what God gave to Joseph Smith. Yeah. And so, um, <sighs> And you were convinced or felt that this was the proper way to go, right? Actually, before I was even married, before I, before I was married, I was reading the Book of Mormon. And I didn't really think about, pray about it if it was right. I read it and I knew it was right. It was just <laughs> like that feeling came. I knew it was right. And my religion, yes, I read the Book of Mormon, not so much the DNC, because I, I didn't know what they were talking about as a child, but that feeling was pretty much my religion. I took that as it was from God. Yeah. And it wasn't from God, it was a feeling. Because reading the Book of Mormon and getting that wash of the burning of the bosom, if you want yeah. to call it that, yeah. I have got that same feeling reading a novel. <laughs> and so when you go by your feelings, yeah. everybody's got feelings, but like, going back, to, yeah. Like we say, the heart can be deceived. And <laughs> My heart was very deceived. Yeah. Now that I know the truth, yeah. And um, so anyway, get getting back to uh, getting uh, being married with Adam, um, living up on the property. Our neighbors couldn't stand the fact that 
we were living plural marriage. We're, we're right there and... Yeah, he kind of explained. Yeah. Everybody around was and Mormon. And so... And could you sense the tension? Oh, and, the tension was there yeah. all my life. Oh, boy. All my life. We, yeah. were, we were hated. Yeah. And um, my father was hated. But um, so trying to get us evicted because we didn't have a deed, well, that didn't work. <laughs> So what's the next thing you do? You take their water away. So they took our, they took our irrigation water away, which was very, very difficult because my dad planted all these fruit trees and we had a beautiful place. Mm. And then for you know years and years seeing that die, that was hard. But then when they undermined our spring, yeah. which we all know that we can't live without water, <laughs> and we know That's that true. there's been a lot of stories yeah. on war for water, but... Uh, yeah. Well, Charlotte, let me interrupt because we're just about out of time, believe it or not. I did want to ask you, we're, we're going to do another episode with you, but okay. I did want to ask you, what did you think about Jesus at this point? Who was he As a child, Jesus to me was who Joseph Smith met in the grove or when he went out to pray for the first time. That's who Jesus was to me. The father and the son yeah. floating in the air while Joseph was on Kneeling the ground. Um, yeah, <laughs> that, that's who Jesus was to me. As far as anything else, I never thought, as a child, I never, really, I never really thought about him, I'll tell you the honest truth. Really? It was Joseph Smith, Brigham Young, and John Taylor. That was the important stuff. I, I don't know, it, 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 it wasn't there. It wasn't Isn't that there. interesting? I mean, here you are, or at least were, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and your relationship or your understanding or your thought process of Jesus, I guess he was at the end of your prayers yeah, in the name he, of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I focused, uh, my focus was on Joseph Smith. And like your song, praise yeah. to the man. <laughs> that was your one of, one that of your was favorite my all-time favorite song as a little girl. I funny? used to make my bed singing that with every, all the gusto that I had. Oh, and, well, Charlotte, um, you're a delight, and we're going to get to to visit with you a little bit more. And I know you've got some <clears throat> scriptures you want to share with yeah. us. So, anyway, we appreciate you coming, and <clears throat> excuse me, and we'll plan on visiting again and seeing you at the next next episode. So. See ya.